How bad do I want coffee right now? Yes. I'm the type of person that drinks coffee every morning. I wake up and literally the first thing I think of is coffee. So it's been the hardest thing to give up. I usually have like three to four cups of coffee a day. What? Sure? Yeah. I don't see that. One night I gave in and had some cold brew and uh, I did not get any sleep that night. That was a really bad idea. Hey everyone, this is Sana and I'm coming at you from, well, home. Cause we're all home or we should be home because we should be staying at home. So we decided here at Asia Plus to ask some Muslims from around the country exactly, well, what's good, what's not so good, and what's keeping them hungry this stay at home Ramadan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salaam alaikum, AJ Plus. Salaam alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak. My name is Anwar. I'm Anwar's mom. Mom. Say your name, you have a name, Mom. They know my name, my name is Amal. Salaam alaikum, Ramadan Kareem, it's your boy Ryan Harris, and uh, I'm just so happy to be able to join you and talk about this stay at home Ramadan. I am Ramadaning in Chicago, Illinois, either in my tiny studio apartment on the north side or outside Cook County Jail with hundreds of others demanding mass release now. I'm fasting, you know, from home, Hoboken, New Jersey, chilling with my wife. I'm in the East Coast of America, and we have been sheltering in place for, I don't know, something like nine weeks or something like that. Maybe, no, maybe 10 weeks now. Where are we doing Ramadan? Where are here. we? Here. What's here? Uh, where do we live? <laughs> We're on the planet Earth. We are in our apartment. We're at home. I went all out with the decor. I usually never decorate for Ramadan, but this year I felt like if I'm gonna be inside my house, I want my house to feel like it's in the spirit too. This year, I think, and especially with COVID, um, staying at home has been really helpful to just sit and slow down. And that's been my one goal, is to learn how to slow the hell down. Instead of being so busy, I might be more focused on what the month is actually about. One of the best outcomes so far has been that um, fasting has made me end my pandemic binge snacking habit. I've had a lot of support from, from fellow Muslims as well as non-Muslims this Ramadan who understand how important this month is. It's my mom and all my brothers. Um, so it's kind of cool being all together and just fasting and having a big meal at the end of the day. Alhamdulillah, even if they give me a lot of hard time, but guess what? This is the best Ramadan ever. My kids, my husband, very close from each other, clean, cook, read Quran, pray, everything perfect, alhamdulillah. I mean, the great thing about, you know, Ramadaning while staying at home is that, you know, I can sometimes enjoy like, you know, dinner with my wife. I'm not snacking throughout the day like I used to, and I'm just gonna, you know, focus on, you know, a meal made by my, like my wife. So it's been like, you know, extra special, and I like that. I can't remember being home for more than two weeks at a time in the last 18 years of touring. And so I'm so grateful for the chance to really come home to my family. What's been really good for me this Ramadan is most Ramadans I end up having to just be with community, which I miss a lot, but I don't get to spend so much time with family. Uh, and this Ramadan, I get to be with these two munchkins and with their mama. I'm coming home to my family, but I'm also coming home to myself. I'm really grateful to get to know myself and to, to really sit with myself when I'm not in front of other people. Uh, that's just such a profound, tremendous gift. In terms of a work-life fasting balance, this is the chillest it's ever been for me. Like, it's really nice to be able to wake up and still kind of take it easy at home, not have to go into the office. It's not as physically taxing as other years. Well, things have been going good. The fast has been going good. My meals, iftars have been going good. Being at home lets you pray more. <laughs> not miss those times. One of the beauties about our mosque is that every single day during Ramadan, there's free food for the community. But this Ramadan, in addition to giving free food curbside, we're also going door to door to give masks to the community. As amazing as it is to be able to socialize and go out and be within a community of people that you may or may not know really ultimately, as amazing as that is, it's also really nice 
to not have that as a distraction. Being able to pray till we at home is a gift, um, especially for an imam when you have to lead the prayer or you are entrusted with you know, making sure that whoever is leading the prayer in Tarawih is not making mistakes. Praying at home in Ramadan, uh, though I miss the masjid, has been extremely fruitful and uh, beautiful. What's hard about Ramadan this year? I don't know, it might have something to do with the fact that we're experiencing an emotionally, physically, and spiritually trying month in the midst of a global pandemic that's leading to an economic meltdown. Just maybe. Usually right around this time, I'd be looking for flights to Chicago to go spend the last few nights of the month plus Eid with my family. And of course, that's not happening this year. The hard thing is definitely just being tempted by, by conversations about food. But you know, it's all manageable. You know, it's been a while. I'm an old man, been doing this every year. So, so it's part of the fight. I've even had dreams of mistakenly breaking the fast. I don't know if you guys have gotten to that point yet in Ramadan, but sometimes I'll, I'll be sleeping. I'm like, oh no, I broke the fast at 11 o'clock on accident or something. And then I'll wake up and be like, whew, all right, time for suhoor. The hardest thing has been um, learning how to use, operate a camera and set up lights and film my own videos. Usually I have a crew of four to five people, but during this quarantine, I've been doing everything on my own. For me, to be honest with you, um, I can't say I have bad thing, bad times or hard times. Just the only thing when it's Anwar to start filming and um, do a lot of mess and call me. Why do you have to bring I, me into this? I have to. I have to be honest. This Ramadan in particular, you know, it's because everyone's just, you know, uh, doing Zoom fundraisers and webinars here and there. Uh, it's been really hard to keep up with the commitments because every organization is scrapping to do whatever they can uh, in the midst of all of this. The babies do not care that it's Ramadan schedule. So I'm working from midnight to 4 a.m. because that's the only time that it's quiet in the house. And then at 6 a.m., the babies wake up. They're like, okay, you're ready to go to bed at five? Well, we get up at six and we're ready to eat, we're ready to play, we're ready to take baths, we're ready to do the day. So get with it. One thing that has been among the hardest has been living that close to the mosque. See those arches right there? That's my local mosque and I can't go inside. I mean, I think the lack of physical, tangible community is definitely the hardest thing about Ramadan this year. In general, I think it's just that spirit of solidarity and that communal spirit that I'm really missing out on. Seeing people that I haven't seen since last Ramadan and going to the mosque at night with tons of other people who I haven't seen in a while, I miss those moments. Ever since I became an amazing chef, uh, it's been very tempting. Come on, son, to get... amazing chef. You can't say you are an amazing chef. I'm an okay chef, and yes. having to cook um, almost every day right before iftar uh, for the show. It's called Anwar's Kitchen. I think making the meals has been the toughest part in what's been keeping me hungry. Yeah, you know, I think about steak every day. Uh, you know, I think about even though I'm doing more plant-based. Um, I think about ice cream a lot, even though I don't really eat ice cream. This dark chocolate ice cream that my friend sent to my apartment, um, ever since it arrived 10 minutes ago, and I've been carrying around a spoon all day in preparation, honestly, so. Every day after iftar, after my evening meal, I need to have a cup of chai, and I have no idea why, but, because I don't even drink that much chai like in the off season, but come Ramadan, bam. When I first became Muslim, uh, the, the the fast was from 8 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. So I just got, I, I joined Islam right in the beginning uh, of a winter month, and it was like, oh, this fast is no big deal. And as we all know, the summer fast is a different, different, um, different deal. We're about 4.26 a.m to about 8.09 p.m. today. So so as far as what, what I think about when it's time to actually eat, like, and I actually can't have is, you know, like, uh, my mom's meals. Besides that, I really crave, weirdly enough, just like this low carb ice cream at the end of the night. It's, it's wild. Like, that's the thing I look forward to. Is that what my life has become? I love biryani and I don't know how to make it. And typically in the Ramadan, I would be sure to be invited to someone's house uh, by someone who does know how to make it and make it very well. My big craving every day during Ramadan thus far had been my mom's wara dawali. It's like stuffed grape leaves, you know? And I actually got to eat it today. And then watermelon. It's the perfect accompaniment because it is juicy and it replenishes all of the fluids that you've been missing out on. So, um, 
As soon as sunset hits, this is what I'm breaking my fast on. Peace to all the restaurants that, are, that have been striving through and making this happen over this time. You realize the, the limited amount of food choices you have once you're home. Even if it's just like eating at someone else's house or something like that. Don't try to survive stay at home Ramadan. Try to thrive with stay at home Ramadan. What I usually do is I have a, I create a really busy schedule throughout the day and just get so much work done so that way time flies for iftar. For each one watching us to take advantage from every single minute to have more communication with the family, do a lot of things regarding um, relative, by the phone, messages, and enjoy Ramadan. It's a hard time right now, and so if in your Ramadan at home, you need to do some things to just take it easy, take it easy. I think there's a blessing in everything, and so even though this seems like a harder Ramadan than most, there's a blessing in it. So my advice is to find what that blessing is, grab onto it, and know that we're probably gonna be missing this month as soon as it ends. I think if there's any kind of piece of advice that I could give to um, fellow Muslims especially during this month is to check in on one another. We should be doing this even, you know, in non-pandemic times, but reach out to them, check in on them, see how they're doing. I know it sounds corny, but we really are all in this together. I can't think of another time when the entire Muslim world was basically unified by one similar experience and similar circumstances as we are now for the most part. But just remember, you're not alone this Ramadan. Have some fun, forgive yourself a little bit, and support our Islamic charities who are doing work in our communities as Ramadan is their greatest month of giving uh, and, and receiving gifts. But this is just such a powerful moment to be able to really sit and think about how Islam and the principles of Islam can actually help us imagine and build a world that works for everybody. Um, right now and tomorrow and um, the world that we want to see after COVID is all over. My advice for staying home uh, during this particular time is just use it to make extra salawat in front of Prophet Sallallahu um, Use it to make extra connections with people so we have sort of an opportunity to be able to do that virtually. And, um, you know, we just gotta take advantage of it. When we can't go out, the only other place that we can go is inward. And I think that's a good thing for everyone to be doing this Ramadan and every other Ramadan. This is a historic Ramadan and we're in it. And this is it. This is it. Every single moment that we're in uh, is defining who we were during this time. The way that we showed up, the way that we honored this. Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum. I'll check y'all when we get out of quarantine, inshallah. Salaamu Alaikum.